All right, we are on to the video you have all been waiting for, which is we're gonna fix our electrical issues right here on the beach while we're boondocking. We're gonna show that anything is possible when you know a guy like Scott who can do anything when it comes to electrical work. If you haven't already uh, checked out their, their website, Soul Seeker Solar, um, that's their business. They go around and as they're living the good life on the road, they also install solar systems, power systems, all the works. So good person to know when your power system's on the fritz. Just to catch you up, we had our power converter go out sometime in the last, I don't know, three months, three months ago. Yeah. We were in Mulahe at Don Chano's. We were camping, crazy little humming going on really loud. And, uh, and the, we didn't want to fry the batteries. The lights were flickering. Things were, were showing us that the converter was in fact dead. A power converter, what it does is it takes the input voltage uh, coming through from shore power and it divides it up and it sends it to where you want it to go. So with a converter, it converts it into um, DC power, 12, 12 volt power, which would then feed into the batteries and top off the batteries. The batteries run the lights and the fan and the water pump and um, some of the other small things in the camper. So if you want to recharge your batteries, because you're using your fans and your lights and you're plugged into shore power, you need to have a functioning converter. We didn't need that because we had solar and our solar was actually topping off our batteries. When we were drawing our batteries down through the day, the solar was topping it off and keeping it topped off. But the converter is gonna be a great addition. One, because it puts our RV back the way it's supposed to be with the working converter. Two, it's gonna allow us to plug back into shore power and have that as an option. We have 640 watts of Renogy solar panels on our roof. So again, it wasn't a crisis when this happened, just like everything that happens to us on the road. We took it uh, in stride and we said, okay, there's a workaround for this and there's a fix for this. And hopefully the fix is inexpensive and hopefully the workaround is relatively easy. The workaround was great because we had the solar up on the roof. We have a great battery bank. We haven't wanted for power. Um, so this converter is getting us back on an even keel the way life should be. Then, to get ahead, what we're going to do is we're going to also install a transfer switch. It's a 30 amp transfer switch. This guy is a real deal for our rig, for our setup. We had one in the truck camper, it's 15 amp. We didn't need to light up as many outlets. But essentially what the transfer switch is going to do is it's going to plug directly. We're going to hardwire it into the inverter and into the converter. And so what it's going to do is it's going to recognize what the power source is, the input power source. So if we're plugged into shore power, it's gonna say, hey, inverter, you don't have to work anymore. Uh, but if we're not, if we're boondocking, which is how we spend, I don't know, 90% of our time, then it's gonna say, hey, inverter, there's no shore power, there's no generator, go ahead and throw your energy this way. So it takes it in and then it will light up all of our 110 outlets, which will be great because we've got one, two in the, in the bedroom, one in the bathroom, and then a whole slew of them here in the living room that we're not able to use when we're boondocking. When we're boondocking, we create this nice nest of wires everywhere with the power strips that we have. It's a great thing to do because it's the only option we have right now until we get the transfer switch put in. But it is not ideal. In the truck camper, we kind of permanently mounted some of these um, power strips until we put the transfer switch in there. And it, it was not as tacky as what we've got going on now. This is definitely tacky, it's not convenient. It'll be nice to not have to unplug from the power strip and plug into the wall when we get shore power and then unplug from the wall and plug into the shore, uh, power strip when we're back to boondocking. We'll leave everything plugged in where it is. All the plugs will have a home because all the outlets will work. I am super excited. Lindsay, are you super excited? I'm excited to be able to use our electrical outlets, yes. And you'll get to fire up some things in the bedroom. Yep. Yeah, like my heating pad, and we use the plug in the bathroom. And the and, air purifier. And the air, yeah, we got like a little air purifier I like to use, so it'd be really nice, yeah. And that's when we're boondocking. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be able to stay in beautiful places like where we are, boondocking, and be able to fire up and run basically everything in our camper, just like we are on shore power. Obviously, we're not going to run as much power because we only have 420 amp hours of AGM battery, um, which is still a really sizable battery bank. Um, but we're not just going to run things just for running them sake uh, because we still have limitations on our power. However, uh, it's going to be really, really awesome to have these two things back in action 
And uh, I'm not sure how much is going to get filmed because Scott's going to be doing most of the work. I'm going to try not to get in the way, but I am going to be helping and studying so I can go back and share with you some of the things that were done and how they were done and why they were done a certain way. So on that note, we're going to go ahead and get started. Well, the work is done. Scott's awesome. He got us all hooked up. We can't test the converter, of course, because we don't have shore power. But what we're going to do is we're going to run. Um, Scott's got like a power machine. His his solar setup's incredible. I can't tell you how many amp hours of battery capacity and solar, but he's got a fifth wheel. The entire thing's covered in solar panels. Anyway, we're going to run power from him over here, and we're going to mimic shore power so we can make sure that the um, converter works and also that the transfer switch works so that the transfer switch recognizes whether shore power is coming in or whether the inverter is coming in because that's what the transfer switch is doing right now. So we have a transfer switch that was built in that would tell between the generator and shore power. That's always been there in this particular RV, but what we've added now is the ability for it to determine whether it is shore power generator or now the inverter which is supplying the power and, uh, and so that way we'll know if we're not plugged in, it's got to be the generator or the uh, inverter that's supplying the power. If the generator is not running, it's going to be the inverter supplying the power. Long story short, power is now distributed through all the outlets and all the whole camper. So we can leave stuff plugged in, but we have to know what is plugged in and what's drawing power because now we could have some draws pulling power. For example, if we were to leave good old cell phone plugged in. Um, there's a chance that, not a chance, but if it's plugged in and it's just there, it's going to continue to draw power. Um, and that's going to be a new draw for us because before we had to come down here. And play the switch around game. Unplug something, plug something in, unplug something, plug something in. We don't have to play that game anymore. I'm excited. Who else is excited? I'm excited. How excited are you? Very excited. So excited that you cook curry? I cook curry next door. Next door. Because <laughs> Scott has all the power. Yeah, Scott has all the power. He has so much power that he could run like four or five RVs at the same time. Yeah. So I've got a mess to clean up. It's not a big mess, but I'm going to put stuff together. Um, it, this is what we look like. We pulled some panels off right here so that we could access the inverter with the Romex wire that we ran. The Romex wire runs all the way down under there. The transfer switch is now underneath our stove area. And then the power center is next to that underneath the sink. So I'm going to zip all this up, clean it up. And then it's Sunday fun day here on the beach. You may be able to hear it in the background, but we've got some local families that have been having a blast. We're gonna go uh, see how they're doing. <laughs> 